Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you will, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified of new videos. Today I have the Platinum 3776 Century for you. I'm going to remove my ink tag there. And it is a beautiful pen. And I think that many people love the Platinum Century for a lot of different reasons. And I'm going to tell you my story about this just as we go along. Um, in here, uh, well, in here. Okay, so first thing about this pen is that it's got a very nice band at the top and at the bottom, and uh, actually a pretty nice pen. It has the pen name right there on the cigar, I kind of call it the cigar label, um, but it has a 3776 Century um, on there and then the platinum. So actually a very nice classic looking pen and it has a 14 karat gold uh, nib and this was this one is a medium nib. All the nibs are made in-house and they are platinum nibs. So the size of this nib is I would say kind of between a five and a six. It's not quite as large as a like a Joe uh, number six nib, but it's it's a nice size nib. It flares out on the top right around here, and um, anyway, just just has a very nice bounce and spring to it, especially because it is fourteen karat gold. So this is fourteen karat gold medium nib, and then the interesting thing about this is that it actually mine did not come with a converter. I had to order it. And so it's just a regular, um, well, you have to order a, a platinum converter to go with it, which you would think at this price point of close to 200 bucks, it would come with something like a converter, but whatever, you got to use your pen, right? So anyway, the cap has a slip and seal mechanism and platinum actually prides themselves and says that this slip and seal is like 20 it, it'll keep your ink wet for 24 months. Uh, I have not tried that. This pen I've had for a, a couple of months. And anyway, so it, it's, it writes right off the bat. It's never dry. So that's the nice thing. Um, I have in here the Irusha Zuku um, Asa Gao. And um, anyway, it's just a great, great ink in a, in a nice pen. So this pen is available in lots of different colors. I have boring black with gold and uh, it comes in all different ones. I love the bourguignon, which is like a wine color. There's also a gorgeous blue and then a really, really pretty lavender niece um, pen and it's niece from the province or the area of France and ICE. And I really love that one, but it's, I, I, you add another 75, 80 bucks to it. So can't quite justify that right now. Anyway, maybe you can. And if you can, I think it's wonderful. So uh, I have black and I'm okay with black because that's just how I roll. Uh, but anyway, so it has cartridges, converters you can use. And now I'm out of focus because I was too close in. And I, it the ink, the ink, the nib comes in lots of different, sizes the nib widths and um, they even have an ultra extra fine uef they have an extra fine fine soft fine a medium which is this one a broad and then a coarse which is like a double broad and then also a music which i'm kind of interested in as well so the gold nib actually does give you a nice bounce to it so just a nice classic cigar shape nice classic black and gold pen I think that's, you know, that's really all there is to say about that. It is actually very light. Um, it has a light acrylic body. So anyway, that's okay. I was going to do them this way, but I think I'm going to have to do it this way because I can't quite see what is going on. So get my trusty ruler out, my Pilot Metropolitan. Um, this is a Pilot Custom 74, just so you can see the size comparison. I'm going to put it right next to it because a lot of people want to see this next to the Custom 74. And then if you don't have either one of those pens, hopefully you have a Twisby Eco and that's how that measures up. And then another pen that uh, people are comparing this to is 
the Pelican M400 because again, it's the same similar price point and you can tell that is way smaller than those pens right there. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, uncapped. And I think you're gonna see that this is pretty small. Oh wait, capped. Let me tell you what the cap size is. It is almost a at 5.5 inches. Uncapped, it's about 4.8, 4.9. Uh, so that brings me to why I have this pen and why I did not really get to pick the color of it. Here's the Custom 74, it's right at five inches. This is, you know, it looked very small, but look, now that it's uncapped, it's about the same. And then of course the Metropolitan, which doesn't even, it's not even in the same class range at $25 for the pen. And Twisby Eco's like, you know, 30 bucks and that does not measure up either. So those are uh, just for size comparison, not for cost comparison, definitely not a apples to apples uh, with those two. So I'm gonna get those out of the way because these three are, the sim they're similar in the cost. And I think they're the ones that are real contenders for comparison. So the reason why I inherited this pen is because my husband purchased it because of all the rave reviews of you've got to have a platinum 3776 century and so he purchased it and he doesn't like it in fact it sat in his pen box for a while i was eyeing it of course because that's just what i do and it's so nice to have someone in the family who has the same hobby as you because then you can trade and you can figure out what you like and what you don't like. And so I wanted to give him the respect of not, you know, taking over his pen. And then when I saw it just sitting there in the box and him not using it, of, of course I asked, well, can I use this thing and how come you're not using it? Now, the first thing is it's too small for his hand. So he um, said that when you post it, um, it's fine and it's actually very well balanced and you can see, but unposted with my little hands, it's like, I mean, it's pretty small, especially compared to like the Pelican M400, which is pretty small as well. So he did not like the sizing of this for his larger hands. And then, so I said, well, why don't you just put the cap on and post it? And he said, well, let me show you why I don't wanna do that. And I'm hoping you can see it. But what happened is that this has, I don't know if this is gonna pick up, but I can just see on my end, there's like some scratches here from posting it. So it kind of freaked him out that if he has to have this posted, it's scratching up the acrylic and he didn't wanna do that and therefore he didn't wanna use the pen. So that's that's the first thing, and I told him, well, you bought it, might as well use it. I mean, even if it scratches it, at least you're using it. But then he said, yes, but there's an additional thing. It's not gonna. Okay, don't know if you can hear that clicking noise. Um, I like it, I don't. it doesn't bother me. And he said that when he's sitting down thinking, he's hearing the clicking noise and he does not like that. And then it clicks sometimes when he's writing. Anyway, long story short, it's too many issues for him and he didn't like it. Uh, one more thing I wanted to point out is the small grip section. That's kind of the kicker for why it just stayed in his box. And um, I, when I did my review on my Pelican, um, I mentioned that I grip my pens up high and these threads are pretty sharp. Um, I'm used to writing with this now, uh, but I have to say it's not a go-to pen for me. Um, and so these threads are not as sharp. They're actually very smooth, but I don't know if you can tell, there's like, there's dirt in the threads that just kind of, it, it just picks it up and you have to kind of use a little brush to get it out. So anyway, the grip section is, I'm off the camera, um, it's like 0.75 and it's just about the same for this one. So those are very small grip sections. I'm gonna 
this is not a comparison video. I want to do a comparison. So just stay tuned because I'm going to do a comparison of writing. I don't know if you can tell, this is just a tad bit bigger grip section on the Custom 74. And then the body is longer as well. So the Custom 74 seems to be just a better um, sizing in terms, and also a Japanese pen, but again, not a comparison video. So let's put these two aside. All right, and by the way, just saying, you get the converter, and of course the Pelican M400 is a piston fill, so you have to purchase a converter extra on the Platinum, which I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't. So if you're paying that much money, you should get a converter, but that's okay. So I don't know if you can tell or if you heard, there's a little bit of feedback, which I like, and I actually love that. It's a very smooth nib, and um, let's write down the ink. So don't know again if you can hear the um, feedback. It's very slight. Well, it's quite a bit on that. And there is one more thing on this nib. Uh, when my husband first got it, he had to work on the nib as well, which kind of, again, that just, it kind of sets him off and has a bad kind of taste in his mouth on the pen to begin with if it's not writing great right out of the box. I've actually read same reviews, um, but especially for the ultra fine, uh, ultra extra fine UEF nibs and even up to the fine nibs. So he thought that the medium nib would be better. Personally, I love it. I think it's great and I'm actually really happy to have it. So Anyway, here's, here's this. And this is on the Rhodia dot pad. This one was just a regular ledger pad. And I don't know if it's Platinum Century 3776 or is it Platinum 3776 Century? Does it matter? Don't know. So a little bit drier just on the Rhodia dot pad, but what a pretty ink, isn't it? I didn't even write the ink on this one. Hmm. Okay. And a writing comparison. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And I know what the fuss is about. It's just a, actually a very pleasant pen, a very pleasant writing experience on this. I'm loving the medium. And like I said before, kind of the, the medium is now my, my favorite. I've moved away from the fines and extra fines because I did love writing with mechanical pencils. But uh, this is just, it's, even though it's a medium, let me show you. There's hardly any, actually there's no bleed through or even show through on just regular 
copy paper, not copy paper, but just ledger paper and hardly any feathering, but that also has a lot to do with the ink. So anyway, but the medium nib just shows and showcases that blue so, so well. And I don't know if this was helpful to you at all, but I kind of feel like you got two reviews for the price of one in that my husband's views on this pen and him being fairly disappointed with it versus me being pretty excited but also I was excited because I got this pen and I didn't choose it and um, he just kind of worked that whole thing out for me so love it and I'm so excited and I've been writing 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 with this and it just has not failed because of that slip and seal mechanism and yes it's a little light on the weight but that's okay I'm good with that. It's actually a very comfortable writer for me. So if you have larger hands, I would say you might want to just take a look and wait until I do my Pilot Custom 74 versus Platinum 3776 video, which is going to be coming out soon. And uh, just kind of take a look and see from there. But if you're going to spend 200 bucks, you probably want to do some research and make sure it's something that you want and is not going to sit in your pen box forever and a day with your wife finally stealing it from you. So anyway, that's my review on this lovely pen and uh, till next time. Bye.